Hello and welcome back to the second part in my memory upgrade series of the Synology DS220 Plus. In my previous video, I looked at what would happen if we installed the unofficial crucial memory upgrade of uh, DDR4 memory into this device. Synology have always been abundantly clear. They do not want people using unofficial memory. They want you to use their memory because of security and stability. And they've got limitations on their devices like this one that only go up to six gigabytes. But I know a number of you out there want to go higher than that. You want to do virtualization or do lots of stuff where memory is going to get eaten up and eaten up. So you want to upgrade in a way that Synology themselves won't let you, which can invalidate your warranty, which can make your data unstable, which can effectively undermine this device in terms of your overall usefulness. And just like my previous video, the reason for today's video is simply because I'm doing this test so you don't have to. Now, in my previous test where I did the 16 gig memory, it did recognize the 16 gig memory uh, crucial stick. It did recognize all 16 gig. It gave a total of 18 gig with the two that's internally built in on the inside panel. And that memory was visible within virtualization, uh, the virtual machine tool, Synology Virtual Machine Manager. It was visible in the surveillance station application. It was available to see in the info center without any red flags or warnings. But in the resource monitor, when you went to the uh, memory tab, there were lots of graphical inconsistencies, lots of drag and draw, lots of the bars not working properly. And for me, it was enough to be quietly suspicious of utilizing larger memory in these devices. I know the CPU inside this device can support more than the six gig Synology say, but it's worth highlighting that this device, when that CPU should only really be used up to eight gig anyway. So the inconsistencies were suspected, but even when seeing it, it did throw me out of the loop a little bit because a lot of you buy Synology for their software and it might undermine the smoothness of that. But in today's video, we're gonna look at the 32 gig module. Now, as described before, the Synology 4 gig model retails for about 80 to 90 pounds. It's four gig of DDR4 memory, and that's 2,666 megahertz. That include, includes tax. And of course, the price will change depending on where in the world you buy. I know there are some bargains. We can get this for around 60 to 70 quid, but those are kind of flash deals. Um, so when you look at the Crucial options, you see a lot of them arriving with the eight gig module of Crucial, for 40 pounds including tax and then 70 pounds for the 16 gig module and this 32 gigabyte module is 170 pounds so 170 pounds might seem a lot but that's a hell of a lot of memory and what we're going to do today is install this memory module inside that Synology before we do let's take a good look at this device and again we can do a little introspective here we have got the Synology module there and that's four one gig cells underneath that label you can see just there maybe at an angle and the other side is bare next we can look at that 16 gig module from before and on this 16 gig module we have eight chips of one gigabyte on either side of there and then finally we have got this the crucial 32 gig module with each one of those cells supporting two gig of memory each bringing the whole thing up to 32 gig of DDR4 sodium. What we're gonna do is remove the side of this box. So we're gonna pop that memory over there before we get them all mixed up, make sure I get the right one. And um, you remove your drives. So again, make sure you don't get these mixed up. If you've watched the intro to the other video, I'm sure you've skipped beyond this already. Um, but we've removed those bays. Next, we look inside where our memory module is, just like in the previous video, and that's where it is. There's only the one module there. And if we take the memory, make sure that the uh, crucial label or the manufacturer's label at least is on the outside. Slide it in to the available bay. Pop it in there. This is lots of fun with just a single hand, I'll tell you that. Actually, I'm wrong. The non-crucial label goes on the outside. It's slightly different on this one. Make sure the sides clip as they have done there. That's all clipped. Double check because we want to make sure we hear that noise on camera. Got there, get ready, three, two, one. And the memory is clipped in. We can have a good look there. We can see that memory module's gone inside. And that is that big 32 gig module installed inside. And what we're gonna do is exactly the same as last time. We're gonna boot this device up. We're gonna pop our drives back inside. We're gonna boot this up and see 
what DSM does with this memory. And once again, I'm doing this so you don't have to. And ultimately test what happens if you install unsupported unofficial memory on the Synology DS220 Plus. Let's go ahead and make our way over to the screen. Well, bad news guys, it's been around 20 minutes since I installed that new memory module and I can tell you right now, just based on what you're seeing here, that this is all we've been getting for the last 15, 20 minutes. This bottom light has been flashing on the rear of the device. We can see the two LE, um, green LEDs that denote that we have network access. I hope you can see that there on camera without me wrenching this out of the very short cable that I've put it on here on the camera. But there's no avoiding it that right now this does not look good. We may have bricked this system. I hope not. And I'm going to keep things running anyway, hopefully on screen as well. I've have been scanning the local area network here on my laptop to almost no success. It's still finding my other test Synology on the other side of the room. But sadly, this NAS is no longer appearing on the network. And with no LEDs promoting system function or drive function, I think we can assume that not only is that memory module not supported, but we may have bricked our system. So the next thing we're going to do is power this device down. And again, do not try any of this at home. Uh, I'm gonna hold down that power button to get this device to power down to a shutdown state. We're gonna go there and we'll see if this even functions. I'm trying not to cover the LED too much for you guys to see. It's that mad seagull that lives up there. Uh, we're gonna carry on there, let this power down. And now we've powered that device down. What I'm going to do is now remove front panel. I'm going to remove the bays again. And again, I would normally let these bays spin down a little bit before I remove them. I'm trying to be gentle, but I just don't want you guys have to wait too long. I don't want to break recording. I want to keep this as straightforward as possible. There's our drives. Next, we're going to delve inside. And we're going to remove that memory module inside. So there is the offending 32 gigabyte crucial memory module pop that down there i'm going to reintroduce our hard drive base like so and then we're going to power this device up and this time i'm not going to cut recording we're just going to see what happens right now with this pre-installed have we bricked our system or will this device work again so Let's see if this boots. Now, I know a lot of you, uh, you're not really going to be listening to me. You're just looking at this little light down here. In fact, talking to me is probably quite redundant. But nevertheless, while this boots up, which normally takes two to three minutes, I'm going to carry on talking a little bit about unofficial memory. Now, this two-part series was for a couple of reasons. One, because as mentioned in the other video, a lot of you have messaged me about unofficial memory inside these devices. And it's something I have dabbled with and I probably will dabble with going forward. I'll probably almost certainly try it out with the newer models from Synology going forward. But what I will say is more and more we are seeing Synology crack down on this sort of thing. Um, and now there are schools of thought on this. A lot of users think it's Synology trying to sell their own memory, you know which mm, kind of has logic behind it, although I don't completely agree. Um, a lot of the time, they do have to do a lot of testing and making sure everything's right. And a lot of that testing, that money has to come from somewhere and that has to, you know, you don't invest in a thing without result. So there is reasoning and a school of thought behind official memory modules. Also, it kind of makes the market very easy for people that are less technologically versed, that are wondering which unofficial memory module they have to buy. That doesn't restrict it to everyone, of course. There are a lot of us out there that know the difference between our sodium, our long dim, and more. Um, but I will say that on a device like this, six gig of memory with a dual core CPU is enough for a normal user. And a lot of users that go for the 220 aren't trying to go pie in the sky. They're not trying to go crazy. And the idea of installing a huge memory module like a 32 gig in this isn't uh, is going to be as advantageous as it might be to others there's our beep look at the timing on that and we are now getting some of those leds so it looks like we might have got lucky in not bricking our system i won't lie there i have brick systems in the past not necessarily with memory although some people it has happened to them but i genuinely thought i'd lost another one here now what i'm going to do is now we've got the beep on screen here and i don't know if i've still got the screen recording there for you guys at home i haven't decided how I'm going to work this out in post because all of this is kind of done on the fly. 
Um, going ahead there and we can see that the DS220 Plus has now appeared there on the system screen in front of me here. And it is stating the device as ready. So I'm going to move over to this screen. Maybe I'll minimize the camera or leave it on screen. I'm going to double click. And as we see, that was the IP we had before ending 112. It's still on 112, so we've got uh, a static IP arrangement there. There is our other test NAS in the background, not the NAS in question, the one we want is the SD20+. Plus. I'm going to log in. And we're going to take a good look about what we are seeing, both in the notification panel and in the hardware details moving forward. Straight away, we are already telling that the memory bar of available memory has changed substantially. When we did our 16 gig um, uh, memory module install, we had memory utilization at 7%. Now bear in mind, that was 16 gig with the original two making, making it 18 gig, and now we have two gig. So the percentages are relative. Now if we move in, we can go into the info center, we can also go into the resource monitor and see how, if anything, has happened to our system while we've been mucking around with these different memory modules. Um, the memory graph here has still got that weird line, but it does look like the graph has now been slightly like damaged there in what we were doing. It has seemingly repaired itself there on screen, but it's still not perfect. And particularly there at the bottom, there was that slight bump there along the road at the beginning. Also, we can see our memory module has reappeared and it's listed as two, uh, 2048 megabytes, which again is two gigabytes. Now, moving forward, we can look at the notification panel and there's still just the message about the external drive that I connected abruptly in a previous video when we're doing our backup, something you should not try at home. But overall, it does look like our system is back to normal. Now, I don't know if Synology have got information running in the background of this device that have showed that I've played around with the memory. I don't know if what I've just done has just in completely invalidated the warranty. I honestly have no idea. But for now, I'm gonna stick with this device in its two gig configuration, moving forward to the rest of the videos. And I do hope you guys have learned things from these videos, maybe something to your, you know, to your benefit, to your detriment, maybe you're going to go ahead and do memory upgrades on your NAS system. I will be testing more and more memory modules on the newer, newer systems. And again, I do it not because I personally have a huge amount of faith in unofficial memory because I have mixed feelings about it. But it's just to avoid you guys having to do the same thing and having that horrible cold feeling that your system may have died. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click like if you have enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more. Visit the links in the description. There should be a guide to Synology memory down there as well. And otherwise, I will see you next time.